So Ilzi, talk about how this how this idea started as far as working with abstract art and coupling that with what for those of us who have just been exposed to the business side. How do you mesh that? How do you mesh those two together? What's the what's the who cares? Or the what's the so what <laughs> behind that? It really started with my coach, Christina Berkeley, mm -hmm. because she has been doing art and she has no background in art. And I have yeah. some. And she saw my paintings in the background of the room. So we talked about art. Actually, we talked about art uh, in the discovery call with her before I started working with her. That was the bond. And uh, it really started with you when we were talking about stuff. Mm -hmm. And since we have um, been together in other events, like Michael Plunges. Mm -hmm. Oh, and uh, remember my birthday too? I did uh, something like an art event. I do. Mm -hmm. But then I noticed with you that uh, you were so open to experimenting. Actually, you have been one of my ideal clients, if not the ideal client. <laughs> type, if I can say so, and um, since I have been analyzing myself, what's wrong with me, you've heard from my speeches over the years, mm -hmm. where I've been trying to figure out what's wrong with me, mm -hmm. and uh, because I come from kind of perfect family, my parents have been together um, since they married and uh, looks like they have perfect marriage and the same with my sister and uh, I am like um, the black sheep among <laughs> the white ones and I've been trying to figure out what's wrong with me and uh, picking myself apart and trying to you know read all kinds of books and, and everything and uh, then I came across this um, one book, actually, where I realized that nothing is wrong with me. <laughs> and uh, I don't know how it started with art is that um, I noticed the same patterns within you. Mm. And uh, I know that there's nothing wrong with you, <laughs> that you are actually extremely talented uh, and open to all kinds of things and have your, um, how you say, many faceted, I don't know. Multifaceted. Multifaceted, yeah. and uh, I just thought I would try to experiment with you mm -hmm. to see how open you would be to this kind of thing and uh, how that would help uh, create a metaphor that you could use in other areas of life. And it looks like it worked, yeah. uh, it, <laughs> that it created miracles what do you think about it I, i'd agree i think the the one thing that i that well there are a lot of things that stick out there but the the one thing i'd want to clarify is that you know when i think of metaphor that's words on a page mm -hmm. and that's kind of where it lives and dies mm -hmm. which this has been really much more actualized than that i, I think the the, the 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 phrasing behind it is perfect you know, it it has really served as a a way for me to change my thinking, um, but also a bit of an impetus for me to change, a little of that motivation to change. And you and I have talked about the other stuff that's gone in my gone on in my life in the past year, two years, um, and I won't get onto that on on no, video because nobody nobody wants to hear about that. But going through that process of something that I was very hesitant to do and very nervous to do. I remember the event you're talking about on your birthday where we, a large number of people collaborated on a painting. And thinking back to that, I was very much in my brain, you know, very trying to be very precise and trying to figure out how the moves that I made or, or the marks that I made we're going to impact how everything else looked. And I can't do anything that's not going to fit in right. What those people use for colors and this shape isn't going to fit with that. 
and just completely missing the point of the whole thing and then working through it with you to getting to the point where just doing something completely, I don't want to say stupid or inappropriate on the canvas, but that, that wouldn't make sense from looking from a purely analytical view and then having it turn out absolutely beautifully with some help from somebody that knows what they're doing <laughs> to correct the error. Um, but more importantly, seeing how to apply that same process in the other parts of my life, as far as embracing, taking a risk and mm -hmm. figuring out, you know, what boundaries need to be held and what boundaries are just there because I've thought about them and put them in my head mm -hmm. and that's the only place they are. So working through that with you for art was a really safe place for me because it let me keep all those other boundaries in my head and the rest of my life, let me keep them in place and play very safely with the art yeah. until my brain finally turned it up, turn, started turning things. And it's like, well, mm -hmm. you can do this in other places too and take a little more risk and not be afraid to make change and kind of embrace the opportunities that are out there. Mm -hmm. I uh, noticed the word you picked upon, uh, the metaphor, <laughs> is the story a better word? Or... I, I think story or, and I'm, I'm drawing a blank, of course, on the word for it. Um, to me, it just strikes as much more real than, than metaphor. What is a metaphor in your opinion? In, in my opinion, a metaphor is... Um, it is saying something that um, represents something else, mm -hmm. but is not necessarily as tangible. Yeah. Like if I told the story about, you know, filling up your life, the, the story that we've all heard a million times about, you have a jar and you put different stones in it to represent different parts of your life. It's very creative and imaginative but there's a bit more of a jump to make it real and tangible compared to what we're talking about here does that make any any sense metaphors seem some metaphors in my perspective seem a little more disconnected from reality oh. whereas what we're talking about really was very grounded mm -hmm. in reality I may just be parsing words and splitting hairs. But. No, but that's that's fun. That's part of the self-discovery yeah. and whatever works. But we've talked also about religion, right? Mm -hmm. We have. Mm -hmm. And uh, part of Christianity mm -hmm. is the Bible, right? Mm -hmm. Bible studies. Yeah. And we both know that it's like a bunch of metaphors, yes. right? Yes, <laughs> very much so. <laughs> and then... We also also know that at the beginning they were just stories, and the Bible mm -hmm. was actually written yep. down on the paper hundreds of years after, right? Yep. Well, starting hundreds of years after, and then continually, yeah. depending on what Bible. If you go into Anglicanism, it was only in. I'm not going to throw a year out there and make my, make myself look foolish, but it was well into the Middle Ages. And, and yeah. I am not testing your no. your knowledge of the Bible. <laughs> But, but the thing is, uh, why is it still living? Because it serves people, yeah. right? Yes. In yep. the same way. And we are basically yeah. creating our own Bible. We are creating what works for us. Yes. Or in your instance, what works for you. Yes. And what we are offering now, what we have created the system, so to say. Yeah. Not, not sturdy yet. Yeah. But you have a, an idea how it works. Mm -hmm. Pretty good idea, yeah. right? that we can offer to the others. Yes. That can serve as a metaphor. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. And it's, I think it's interesting talking about it, serving other people. I think the, the hardest part for me would have been if I put myself in the position of somebody who was, who didn't have an existing relationship with you and know you and have worked with you in other areas and already have that, that trust mm -hmm. established. You know, it would have been a very, very hard thought and you saw it the first time yeah. to, to just completely embrace it and disconnect my brain 
and let myself really engage in what was going on as a first step. And then as a second step, allowing myself to continue that same mindset and letting it spread to other areas of my life like that. Um, that would have been a very, very challenging thing for me to do you know, a year ago. Yeah. So this works. It absolutely does. It mm-hmm. absolutely does. And it's, it's rather, rather addictive. Mm-hmm. Um, once you start going down that rabbit hole, you know, you start trying to figure out, all right, how can I replicate this? Um, it's, it's interesting, you know, you and I still collaborate a little bit on painting, um, which I absolutely love. I've tried to figure out how I can, how I can try and get that same, that same experience when we're not actually working on painting and I'm sitting at work. So, uh, today I had a sketchbook and some charcoal mm-hmm. delivered so I can, during work, when I'm stuck on something, I can maybe take 10 minutes and try and regain that same unplug regular brain or conscious mind, let subconscious mind start churning on something and, uh, yeah. And start solving other issues. Yeah. The key is to get out of your yeah. analytical mind and connect yeah. to your subconscious mind. Yeah. right? Yeah. And if you can recreate it, it's, it's really like a skill for me. For instance, uh, I have also mentioned this. I don't know if you mm. remember, but as a child, actually beginning age, Three, I think I was sent uh, to um, a dance school mm-hmm. to learn the basics of the ballet okay. and uh, my uh, trainers were very very strict so I had strong foundations beginning at the age of three up to the age of whatever I don't know 18 or so uh, after that at some point in life, I learned different styles of dance. One of them was modern uh, dance or modern ballet. And in that, I had to forget sort of what I learned in classical ballet and do things completely differently. Mm-hmm. The positions and everything with, with, with my arms and my legs and everything. But I had that background and on, on the... Uh, basis of that, I created something else, and it's very uh, creative. Improvisation is a big, big thing in that. Um, this is what we did with mm-hmm. with the painting. I explained to you just the very basics, what mm-hmm. to not do, right? Mm-hmm. And then it's easy. You remember the basics, and then you create yeah. on the top of that, and really uh, feel free because you cannot make mistakes. Yes. Yeah. And. Uh, when people talk about business, because you're interested also in, in this business mm-hmm. side, people are also worried, what if I do something wrong, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but once it's your business, it's your creation, yeah. you ought to know the basics. Like there is law, there, there are uh, regulations that uh, are imposed upon us by the government. We have to obey, you know, and then there are um, some rules or or whatever we create when we collaborate with our partners or mm-hmm. we have employees or we offer our services and then we uh, prom- give promise to our clients and we stick to that. But everything rest is really improvisation. And people have too much fear around it where they could have joy. Yeah, you bring up a, a great point as far as making a mistake and you know having been worked a little bit with entrepreneurs and then being in a corporate environment for 70 billion dollar company supposedly the the safest environment you can get mistakes are made all the time if you have a business regardless of what it is you are going to make mistakes there's no way around it. Um, but to your point, you, you can either choose to obsess about that mm-hmm. and worry about trying to keep everything perfect and, oh, I don't want to take a risk and try and add more clients because what if this happens? Mm-hmm. You can live in that spot. And if that's where you choose to live, mm-hmm. that's great. Good luck. Or 
you can decide to open up a little bit and embrace what you really enjoy and love about it. And you may make a few more mistakes than you would have if you were really, really careful, but you're also going to succeed much more brilliantly, brilliantly, and you're going to enjoy yourself so much more <laughs> along the way. It's going to be so much more fun to, to be right, 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 wrong, right, 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 wrong, and just loving it as opposed to right a little bit, right a little bit, right a little bit, right a little bit. It's having done that for the last, uh, how many years am I going on? 18 years at a large company. It's for some people, it's great. They love that. <laughs> I, I, I really want to get back to the, let's take some risk and let's enjoy ourselves a little bit and let's win spectacularly and let's fail like we are set on fire and <laughs> just try and enjoy it. Yeah, because there's that saying at the end of the day, but we can rephrase, the, rephrase it and say at the end of the life. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Do you want to, would you prefer to, you know, when you're reflecting on that part of your working part of your life, would, <laughs> would you rather when you get to the point in your life where you're reflecting on your work, would you rather have the regret of, I wish I'd taken the chance. Mm -hmm. I wish I'd got out on a limb. I wish I'd tried a little bit more and maybe cut myself a little more space to, to really see what I'm capable of. Or are you going to regret, man, I wish I'd taken the safe path. Yeah. I wish I had spent my 20 years <laughs> and got my watch and my plaque and my cardboard box with all my stuff in it. Yeah. Which is, for, from my perspective, that first option is a bigger regret. I believe I would regret more not taking the chance than regret not playing it safe. Yeah. yeah. So, as we were going through the process, and especially after we had done a couple of paintings together, what I started to realize is going through that arc of, you know, starting out where it's just getting a comfort level, you know, being willing to put, put some paint on that blemish free, pristine, absolutely gorgeous piece of canvas. When I have no idea what I'm doing, I have no idea how this is going to look like. And any mark I make without knowing what the finished product is going to look like is going to be a blemish and not a start getting comfortable and moving beyond that. Mm -hmm. Then getting to the point where comfortable experimenting, trying different shades, different colors together, mixing things a little bit to see what it does, trying different techniques with the brush that you were showing me, just dabbing it for that little splatter effect and kind of the foggy effect. And then getting to the point where you really get engrossed into it, you get pulled in and you start seeing not necessarily what it's really going to look like at the end, but you start seeing shapes kind of form and how things start playing against each other with the contrast between colors and light versus dark spots on the canvas where there's nothing and, and where you've painted things. And you really start letting yourself zone into that and almost get hypnotized by what you're doing. It was, it was really eye-opening for me to see the first couple of times we did that, that feeling of disconnect, where even if I wasn't necessarily thinking about something else, whether it's a work problem or a personal problem, your brain, my brain felt like it was still turning on that mm -hmm. without me really thinking about it. And the number of times I felt like I had an aha moment Mm -hmm. while really focused on a painting and then light bulb goes off of, oh, here's a little clarification on that thing you were thinking about two days ago and worried about. Here's, yeah. here's just a little nugget to work on mm -hmm. for that. Those type of moments for me, um, that was one of the big takeaways as far as how applicable and important this is and what a great tool it is if you're open to it. Mm -hmm. for, if you have no previous background or interest in art, 
how it can be such an impactful tool to help you in whatever you're dealing with now, personal-wise, work-wise, whatever it is, it really serves as a conduit to let you tap into places you're probably not going to get to otherwise. Yeah, definitely. And just listening to you, but more than listening, looking at mm -hmm. your facial expressions and the light in, in mm -hmm. your eyes, how you lit up. Mm -hmm. When you were talking about that, that is, first of all, it's the biggest gratification for me to me as somebody who had uh, provided that space for mm -hmm. you. But then also thinking about what when people think coaching or life coaching mm -hmm. or business coaching, things like that, what first comes to their mind, it's probably, um, it's... Uh, you're hiring somebody to help you push through something, some mm -hmm. obstacles, some mindset blockages, some uh, like, um, hiring an accountability partner mm -hmm. who will give you homework and then you will work on something and then you will come back and report to that person and, and you are a little bit afraid of what if I don't accomplish this till the next meeting and what is he or she going to say they will think badly about me. That's, that might be a typical stereotype of what coaching means. And uh, yeah, there is a component of that if you choose that to be the component, but um, how coaching has served me as a coachee best um, because I have been in uh, that role as well, is when I have been truly seen, mm. because I am also the, the worst critic of myself. I push myself, and previously, if you noticed, I used the word, a coach is going to put, help you push through mm. those obstacles, and I don't need more pushing mm. much. And I know that there are so many people just like you, you push yourself and then you're being pushed by whoever pushes you. <laughs> and uh, often that is not what we need, mm -hmm. what uh, helps us to perform at our best. Because what happens when you hear the word, just linguistically, when you hear the word push, what happens with your body? Tighten up. Tighten up. Yeah, and when you tighten up, you cannot be creative. You cannot connect to your subconscious mind. Then you are in your analytical mind, or maybe in your crocodile brain, where it's like, mm. uh, you know, um, actually, <laughs> like, like totally blocked and mm. want to fight or want to freeze or stuff like that. What we want. Um, is to connect to the subconscious mind, which is the inner child's mind, that mind where you um, allow yourself to to create and see possibilities uh, fearlessly, where you don't have that background of of previous experience of being criticized or being uh, punished and stuff like that. That's what we want. So we don't want to, the word push. I don't want to have that word in my tool set as a coach. I serve with love and kindness because that has served me. That's one of the things I really have loved about your approach working together is it's, it's very subtle at times. And don't get me wrong, there are times where you are very direct about the, <laughs> the thing you're asking me about, and a few times you've called BS on <laughs> responses you've gotten. But a lot of time, especially when working through a medium like the art, you just very subtly drop a, one question that just kind of plucks on a string somewhere, just very casually, and just twings it a little bit, and it starts further conversation. And it's it's always, that's probably the way to characteristic to characterize it is it comes much more across as just having a conversation with a good friend who you know actually cares about you and it's not about you know getting a billable hour it's more of they're really interested in what's going on and just want to kind of talk through it and that's that's been 
fantastic. Oh, thank you. <laughs> and I should probably go get ready to have a conversation with. Yeah.